hello and welcome back to my channel so as the title says i have got a slow cooker christmas stuffing recipe for you and before we start i am going to say this is a cheats very busy person's kind of christmas stuffing i've done the whole stuffing where you use like mincemeat and you get your sage leaves and your butter and you make your own breadcrumbs and you add all your spices and everything so basically you make it completely from scratch if that's what you're looking for that's not this this is a combination of cheating with shop-bought items to make it look and taste like you've put in hours of effort and it literally takes 10 minutes to prepare and you pop it in your slow cooker for six hours it's absolutely lovely your house smells of christmas so i thought i would bring a real down-to-earth video for those of us that really haven't got the time or even just the enthusiasm this year to be spending hours in the kitchen so i'll take through step by step what i do and how i make it the fact you can do this recipe in the slow cooker is a big plus because you could make it before christmas if you want like a few days before or if you want to do it christmas day it frees up that space in your oven for all the other piles and piles of veg and potatoes and that that we always have in there as well so you kind of get the best of both worlds plus you can leave it on low and keep it warm so before we get into the recipe i just want to give a shout out to masks by amy now this video is not sponsored i haven't been paid to say this amy just reached out to me on instagram because her and her mum watch my videos she asked if she could send me some masks and i followed her page for a while now and she just basically started her own business making these masks so a portion of her proceeds go to birmingham's children's hospital charity and she's always organizing raffles and giveaways and things and she's donating masks to people and just trying to bring awareness to charities which in my opinion there is no better cause there's a lot of people making masks at the moment setting up businesses but Amy has actually really put some effort into promoting charity at the same time. She also donates to women's shelters and things. So she's just generally an all round lovely woman. So she's very kindly sent me three masks and they're such good quality. They're triple layered. They're really thick, high quality fabric. So she has sent me this absolutely adorable Harry Potter one. If you follow me, you will know I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. And then for those days that I'm not in my Harry Potter mood, there's this really beautiful floral print and this is the kind of thing maybe when we're not in tier three that if we were going to go out for dinner or something and you had a nice dress or a bit more dressy like evening wear you could pop this one on because you don't have to just wear the surgical mask you can dress them up a bit and then i absolutely adore this little gnome fabric one it's so cute it's like mr and mrs claus or like two little christmasy gnomes and it is just perfect and it's really made my day today so, so i'm going to leave her instagram page linked in the description box i'll also pop it on the screen now but please make sure to go over if you have instagram and give her a follow and take a look at her masks they're just such nice quality they're just so lovely and it's put a big smile on my face today which i really needed so thank you to amy for that so with that all being said let's go and take a look at the video so what you're going to need is one packet of dried stuffing mix this is just the sage and onion one from tesco it doesn't matter which make you use obviously this is 170 grams i've got eight cumberland sausages I'm going to put in half a teaspoon each of ground cinnamon and ground cloves. You don't have to put those in. I just feel like it gives it that real Christmassy kind of flavour. So I've got some whole chestnuts and some soft apricots, which we are going to chop up into small pieces. And I'm going to use about 100 grams of each of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh these out and chop them. I'm going to add my dry stuffing mix into a bowl and I'm also going to put my spices in now so I'm going to put half a teaspoon of cloves and half a teaspoon of cinnamon you could add anything to this you could put dried cranberries if you wanted pork and apple goes really nicely but this is just a really good cheats method of making a really homemade tasting stuffing without all the stress so we're just going to mix those dry ingredients together oh, it already smells like christmas and now i'm going to pour 400 ml of boiling water into my mix and what we're going to do now is the messy part and we're just going to skin our sausages straight into our stuffing mix. 
So you can use pork mince instead of sausages if you'd rather. I really like the taste that you get when you use sausage meat. I think the added, I think it gives it that little bit of added flavour, especially if you use Cumberland, obviously they've got quite a lot of black pepper in, so I just think it works better. I've done it both ways, but we always use sausage meat when we're doing it like this. So what we're going to do now is pop our apricots and our chestnuts into our bowl and we're now basically just going to get our hands in there. Obviously make sure your stuffing mix has cooled down enough to mix so don't burn burning their cells because you've just poured boiling water in it but once it's cooled down enough to mix you just want to make sure everything's combined with the apricots and chestnuts and everything. And you can make this ahead of time this will freeze really well if you wrap it in a cling film make sure to double layer it or better still put it in an airtight container so it doesn't get freezer burn and this will keep for three months in the freezer and it will keep for a good few days in the fridge as well once it's cooked and cooled completely so you could definitely make this christmas eve or even the day before and it will still be fine for christmas day Right, so what I'm going to do now is just line my slow cooker with some foil. And it just helps it to not stick to the bottom. And I'm just going to give it a few sprays of rapeseed oil. You could use some butter, whatever you want, just so it doesn't all stick. And then we're going to form our stuffing into kind of a loaf shape or whatever shape you want really. I'm going to do mine as a loaf because I find it easier to slice. And I'm just going to pop it in there. If you wanted to now, you could lay a few extra bits of apricot on the top or some chestnuts. I'm just going to leave mine as it is. And now I'm just going to pop my lid on. And we're going to put this on low for six hours. So after six hours, you'll be left with something that looks like this. It's not pretty yet, but it doesn't matter because we're only going to eat it anyway. I've left mine to cool completely. It depends when you're going to make this. Like I said, if you're making it Christmas Day just to save some space in your oven, then it depends how you want to dish it up. We always slice ours because we love to have it cold. In sandwiches, there is nothing better than a turkey and stuffing sandwich, in my opinion. A bit of cranberry sauce, a little bit of mayo. But if you're dishing it up onto a Christmas dinner, then you can just spoon it like you would normally with stuffing. But we are slicers, so I've let it cool completely. I'm going to slice it up and show you. And then obviously, as it isn't Christmas here, I mean, I could freeze this now and use it for Christmas. But because I'm slicing it up to show you guys, we're going to have it for dinner tonight. And I'm going to put it in some part baked rolls and I'm going to put some cranberry sauce and maybe some apple sauce in some but i will show you that as well just for some different ideas so as you can see the inside is lovely and soft it's not dry at all it's really tender we've got the chunks of chestnut and apricot it smells just that little hint of cinnamon and cloves and it just looks amazing. I mean, if you laid this alongside your turkey on your Christmas plate, well, we're going to serve ours in part baked rolls, heated up, and lots and lots of cranberry sauce. But this is such a simple recipe. It's so easy to make. And it really does taste as if you've put a lot more effort in than opening a few packets and chopping a few bits and pieces. So here we are in our baguette. I've just done some part baked rolls in the oven. And we've got some lettuce and some cranberry sauce. I've heated up the stuffing. It just took a minute and a half in the microwave. Cover it over with a plate or some cling film. I haven't added salt and pepper into this recipe purely because you might be serving this with mustard. You might be serving it with gravy. You might be having cauliflower cheese. So I think salt and pepper is definitely a really personal thing. And I would just leave that for you to sample it and then decide to add it at the end. Because some people like more salt, some people like less. I do that with a lot of my recipes. Sort of make them as they are and then you can always add some more towards the end but this is our finished stuffing and this is how we are having ours obviously you can have it for your roast dinner or your christmas dinner but we're going to be eating ours with our cranberry sauce and a little bit of lettuce so that is it for this week i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope you do give it a try let me know what you think follow me on instagram it is just victoria folger and don't forget to check out masks by amy on instagram as well i'll leave it all linked in the description box if you are looking for a high quality really beautiful mask and proceeds that go to charity subscribe if you're not already leave me a thumbs up and i'll be back really soon with another video take care guys Music